student doctors, let's now talk about nitric prusside. Just like before, click on the link and you can learn much more than you will ever need to know about nitric prusside. Note dosage, warnings, toxicity, adverse reactions. Just as before, here's a picture of both the structure as well as a picture of the label. So with respect to mechanism of action, sodium nitroprusside breaks down in circulation. It binds to oxyhemoglobin to release nitric oxide, cyanide, which is toxic, and methemoglobin. Upon administration, nitroprusside produces nitric oxide. Nitric oxide activates guanolate cyclase enzymes and vascular smooth muscle. This increases the production of cyclic GMP, which activates protein kinase G, which goes on to phosphorylate and activate phosphatases. And these phosphatases inactivate myosin light chain. And myosin light chains are involved in muscle contraction. The end result of all of this is vascular smooth muscle relaxation. This allows blood vessels to dilate. This mechanism is similar to that of PDE5 inhibitors such as Viagra and Cialis, which elevate cyclic GMP by inhibiting degradation lowers blood pressure immediately in both adults and children, so that's kind of useful, reduces bleeding during surgery, treats acute congestive heart failure. It's contraindicated for folks with an anterior venous stent and should not be used in patients with inadequate cerebral circulation and should not be used in patients who are near death, should not be used in patients with vitamin B12 deficiency, anemia, severe renal disease, or hypovolemia. So this drug is used with great caution in patients with conditions associated with a higher cyanide to thiocyanate ratio. Specifically, that would include patients with congenital Leber's optic atrophy or tobacco amblyopia, a form of toxic amblyopia caused by tobacco which contains cyanide. Gradual impairment of vision. Patients with acute congestive heart failure, this drug is not recommended. Hatic impairment, also not recommended. Pre-existing hypothyroidism, this drug is not recommended. Although use in pregnant women, this drug is not advised. Available evidence suggests it may be safe, but you have to monitor the maternal pH and cyanide levels. Many adverse effects. The ones I'm listing here are common. Bradyarrhythmia, hypotension, palpitations, tachyarrhythmia, apprehension, restlessness, confusion, dizziness, and the rest of them listed here. Additional adverse effects of nit nitric prosside that are extremely serious include ileus, reduced platelet aggregation, hemorrhage, increased intracranial pressure, metabolic acidosis, and methemoglobinemia. We're gonna focus on cyanide poisoning and thiocyanate toxicity that can result from the use of this drug. So when using this drug, clinicians need to take great care to avoid cyanide toxicity. It turns out too much of this drug too fast, cyanide is generated faster then the unaided patient can eliminate it. Now we're going to talk about how you age your patients. You administer sodium thiosulfate as something of an antidote. The sodium thiosulfate increases the rate of toxic cyanide processing, thereby reducing the hazard of cyanide toxicity. As Paracelsus, the father of toxicology, tells us, everything is toxic. It's just a question of dose. The sodium thiosulfate itself may also be toxic at too high a dose. Co-infusions of sodium thiosulfate have been administered at rates of five to 10 times that of sodium nitroprusside, but you can't do this for too long uh, because thiocyanate toxicity will develop and, and produce hypovolemia. Patients with head trauma, increased intracranial pressure, hyponatremia, hypothyroidism, hepatic or renal impairment in the elderly, Cyanide toxicity can develop in all of these patients. So again, you need to check thiocyanate levels, monitor pulse oximeter. Patients with renal failure have a hard time clearing thiocyanate levels, and this drug itself needs to be protected from the light. And don't use it if it's discolored. Use of this drug can sequester hemoglobin as methemoglobin. Rare patients receiving more than 10 mg per kg of sodium nitroprusside will develop this condition. Other patients, especially those with impaired renal function, will predictably develop thiocyanate toxicity after prolonged and rapid infusions. So as you can imagine, there's a black box warning associated with this drug. So this drug is not suitable for direct injection. It requires dilution before infusion. Hypotension can occur. It requires appropriate monitoring equipment and experienced personnel. Again, because of cyanide toxicity. And this again accumulates through metabolic processes. 
So let's begin to look in detail at the metabolism of sodium nitroprusside. It's metabolized in combination with hemoglobin to produce one molecule of cyan methemoglobin and four cyanide ions. Thiosulfate reacts with cyanide to produce thiocyanate, as shown here, and then thiocyanate is eliminated in the urine. This is why patients with compromised renal function are at increased risk for thiocyanate toxicity. So that's all for sodium nitroprusside.